Hey ho everybody, Ruth Roland the Fiddle Geek here with some preliminaries, some things you need to know before you start to play. And these are not things you necessarily thought to ask, so I'm, I'm going to tell you now. You have your violin, you want to set it on a surface, preferably not on your lap. Because if you set it on your lap, and you open it up and you get out the violin, you get out the bow, then your case is still on your lap and you're going to have a hard time using what you just got out. So preferably you want to put it on a couch or a table or even on the floor, maybe up against the wall. When you do that, you want to put it with the bottom side on the bottom and this may seem straightforward, but the truth is it's not always easy to tell which side is the bottom. If you have a pocket on your case, the pocket is probably going to be on top. If you have strap rings, those are probably going to be on the bottom, sometimes on the side, but um, also on the bottom. And it's easy to tell the sides from the top and bottom. The sides are narrower. So yes, yeah, so you put it flat on the, the floor. If, if uh, if your case has little feet on it, little bumps, those are usually on the bottom. But I did see a case once with the top was flat. It wasn't, sometimes it's rounded. It, this wasn't rounded. Um, the bottom was flat and both the top and the bottom had little bumps on them like feet, four, four little bumps, uh, one on each corner. So the only way that you can tell which way was right side up on that case was because it had buckles and with buckles the tongue is on the bottom the latch is on the top hopefully your case is easy to deal with in that way so uh, when you put it on your surface you want the handle facing out not against the the wall or against the back of the couch or anything like that because once you open the case and you flip the lid, if, well, I'll, I'll show you what it would be like if, if you had it the other way around. Then you would open the case, the, the lid would flip toward you, you'd have to reach around to get your violin out. We want to make things easy, all about making it easy, and so we put the handle towards us. So then if you have buckles or latches, you can ne negotiate those. If you have zippers, make sure you zip, unzip all the way around because if you zip only part of the way around or most of the way around, then when you open the case, there's going to be strain that'll put strain on the zipper and, and the zipper will still be partly closed and the zipper will break sooner. And we don't want to be getting a new case every year. Um, we don't want to have to replace the zipper if it can, even can be replaced. Just unzip it all the way. Let's look at the bow next. So the bow has this bow spinner, which you can see is locking the bow in place. It's, it's pointing straight up and down. And if I turn it so it's sideways, then I can remove the bow. I have to be careful when I remove it so that none of the hairs get caught in it. If a bow hair does get caught in it, just gently disengage it from the bow spinner. And if it breaks or if you have to break it in order to get it out, then just clip it right close to the, the clip and close to the tip. You lose bow hairs all the time. It's not any kind of emergency, uh, but you don't want to yank it out because that can loosen all of, of the other bow hairs in your clip. So now we need to tighten the bow. If we were holding the bow the way we play for traditional playing style, we turn the bow screw away from us. Otherwise it's righty tighty. Either method will work for tightening the bow. And how much do you tighten? Well. I have a pencil right here in this pocket, which will help us decide. The pencil should just be able to go through the bow at its narrowest point. So you see it's pretty wide at the ends, right? The space is pretty wide, but 
this is the lowest point between, the narrowest point between the bow stick and the bow hair. And you see my pencil just fits through. If I tighten it too much, let's do that. Tighten it an awful lot. And I, I don't want to leave it too tight for too long, but it's okay for this demonstration. If I tighten it too much, the pencil rattles around in there when I put it through. And if I leave it too loose, I really have to shove it through and the bow hair bends. So I want it just the happy medium. Goldilocks just right. And that's just about right. So I'm gonna put my pencil back in this pocket and get out the rosin. Without rosin, your bow hair is not going to make much sound. Some, some bows come with rosin already on them. Uh, but we rosin it every time before we play. That's, that's just a ritual because every time you play, rosin comes off the bow. One way to rosin it is just to hold your rosin where your strings are and hold your bow the way you normally hold the bow and then you can practice bowing. If you have rosin in a box and rosin in a box like this wooden box is, is uh, usually cheaper quality. It's not the best rosin. But if you have rosin in a box or if you've worn a groove in your rosin, then you can tell what a straight bow is when you're bowing. You can practice the motion for a straight bow. If I move, just move my arm just willy-nilly, okay, it's not going to be a straight path across the strings. Okay, that's enough rosin. And so I'm putting the rosin all the way away because rosin is very fragile and um, it breaks easily. You don't want to knock it off onto the floor or something and then you'll um, make a sticky mess. Because it's sticky, it might feel smooth, but it's, uh, trust me, it's, it's sticky when it, after it breaks. It's just the powder is sticky too. That's what um, helps, helps it sound good on the strings. Okay, so I'm going to unbuckle my violin, unvelcro my violin now. And I, when I take it out of the case, I hold it by the neck. I don't lift it by the fingerboard. I hold it by the neck. That's very secure. The fingerboard is glued on with very weak glue. So if, if we hold it by the, the fingerboard and all of the violin's weight is dangling off of it, it could weaken that bond between the glue and the neck. The reason that it's glued on with such weak glue is that if we drop it, we want it to split apart into entire pieces, like, um, like it, it, as, as if it's a Lego violin, right? And then you want all of the, the Legos to split apart. We don't want the violin itself to crack. We don't want a crack in the neck or a crack in the violin. The, the, those would be very difficult to repair, very expensive to repair. But if gluing, gluing the fingerboard back on, not a big deal. So not much on the violin. The, nothing is welded together, right? The bridge is just held in there by the tension of the strings. The tailpiece is held in by this little band going across the button. The button just plugs into the hole. Um, the chin rest screws on. The pegs just sit in there. The, the neck itself is glued on. It's quite masterful how they've worked out the best way to do it but it's something that needs to be properly cared for so hold it by the neck or you can also hold it by one of the shoulders okay and then we put the shoulder rest on now i use these shoulder rests with the micro suction cups and they just stick onto the back of the instrument i put mine under a rubber band just for added security. Um, sometimes it gets a little dust on it or there's dust on the violin and the suction cups don't stick, but most of the time they, they do their job. It's just I play an orchestra and I don't wanna be fishing around for my shoulder rest on the floor while the rest of the section is playing. Now I'm almost ready to play. I just need to tune. I'm gonna stand up to do that. ready to 
to play. <laughs> All right, I'm not really ready to pack up. I could play for a lot longer, but let me show you how I pack up. The first thing I do is loosen the bow. You would think that I would have to unrosin it, but I just unrosined it while I was playing. So I'm gonna loosen the bow, okay? And then I'm gonna carefully place the bow over the bow spinner this way, right? Not over it this way, although this still seems to lock it in, over it this way, put it over, place it over the bow spinner and then turn the bow spinner up and down. So when I loosened my bow, sorry, I blew right past that. Loosening is if you hold it like a traditional violin player, you turn it toward you, otherwise it's lefty loosey. Okay, and then uh, one more time, carefully over the bow spinner. Okay, and then the opposite of rosining the bow is wiping the violin. Okay, and I wipe the strings and I wipe the belly. And then I'm going to take the shoulder rest off. Now, if you have just little flat makeup sponges or something like that, you can leave those on. But if you have any other kind of shoulder rest, you need to take it off. And I just take it right out from under the rubber bands. I leave the rubber bands on there, but I take out the shoulder rest and I'm going to stick it back on its card. Now, the reason I can't leave it on, even if I it, even if it's small enough that I can close the case right on top of it, that pressure of the case on the violin and the shoulder rest is uh, too much. The shoulder rest itself might compact, but also the suction cups might um, take, lift some of the varnish away from the violin. And you don't want to ruin your violin just to save yourself a couple extra seconds. Uh, Go ahead, get in the habit of putting your shoulder rest, uh, sticking it on the card or whatever it is, putting it, putting it away properly. And then I buckle it in, buckle the violin in, and lay this cloth on top of it just to protect it a little more from my bow in case it falls. Uh, you might have a violin blanket. That's, that's extra nice. And then I'm going to zip it up all the way. Never close your case and leave it with just the Velcro fastened. You always want to zip it, buckle it, whatever fastening you can do, right? Do it the whole way. Even if your violin's not in it and it's closed but not fastened, somebody could just decide to move it because they want to sit there or something, right? And then they they assume that it's fastened, but actually it's not and your rosin comes out, falls on the floor, makes a mess, uh, whatever else. And certainly if your violin's in there, it's not a good scene. So there, there it is. I'm all packed up and and ready to go. If you're wondering how to get a violin in the first place, this video will get you started and I'll see you there.